Well, uh, before we get into the details of Paul Landsberg's The Experience of Death, uh, which we'll be reading for two weeks to end the course, because it's a, it's a difficult text. I mean, it is difficult text, uh, for I think, for a lot of reasons, because of the subject matter, because of what he's trying to do, because of the nature of the way it was written, uh, which was not... I would say the most systematic or clearest way to present ideas, but perhaps the best way that he could find to get across what he was saying. So it, it, you know, it takes a lot of thinking and sort of, uh, you know, uh, maybe the way the presentation is, uh, is laid out, is not always the easiest thing to follow. So I wanted to start uh, just by giving you my take on some of the fundamental concepts of uh, the experience of death, which are, really uh, raising, I would say, raising questions uh, rather than giving us the sort of definitive doctrine or something about, uh, about death, but raising, raising problems. Uh, well, of course, the title of the work is The Experience of Death. And uh, one of the things that Landsberg says right in the beginning of the work is that uh, he wants to ask this question, what is the meaning of death uh, for the human person? And he says right away that that, that answer to that question has to be rooted in our experience. That is, if it's to be a meaningful uh, answer to the question, uh, it has to um, be based on something that we actually go through. Otherwise, uh, I suppose it would be a fairly abstract uh, academic answer, but not one that would be meaningful to us or reveal the meaning of death to us. So right away, uh, we were faced with a problem and I, something I want you to think about. Think about the title think of, uh, of, of the work and think about what he's saying. He wants to describe the experience of death. Uh, because we've read uh, some of the history of philosophy here uh, having to do with the subject of death. We're aware of Epicurus, and immediately um, we have to ask the question, what experience? That is, if we're Epicureans with regard to death, we do not think that death can be experienced. It's logically impossible. Given the nature of death as the privation of all awareness and sensation, uh, that it actually be experienced. So exactly, so um, Landsberg, who does mention Epicurus briefly later on in the essay, has to be aware and is aware of the, of the general problem of, of trying to talk about the experience of death, given the nature of death. Uh, so he's, uh, no answers here, it's just a problem you should keep in mind. What is the experience of death, according to Landsberg, and how does he give us an answer that wouldn't be immediately refuted by somebody like Epicurus. One of the big, uh, big, big ideas in Landsberg is the idea of the person. Um, he, he, he says that uh, death becomes a problem for human beings only when they realize themselves as persons. So we have to ask, what is the significance of the word person here? Uh, it's a very central thing in Landsberg and something you should keep in mind. Um, I can fill in a little bit in terms of the other philosophers or other uh, areas of philosophy in which the distinction between person and human being is, uh, is made. Um, they may not be fair to Landsberg because they may not be the kind of things he's keeping in mind. But uh, one of the things you have to think about uh, here is uh, what he means by person and, and why it would be that uh, death is problematic. Death becomes a problem, you know, a, a, a spiritual problem, a philosophical problem, a spiritual problem, an, an existential problem only for the for the person as opposed to the, um, what's he called, the living being or the organism, or the member of the species, basically. Uh, yeah, so we'll, we'll be going through that. Uh, we'll, I'll be talking about, you know, maybe some of the ways in which we conceive of person and what he means by person as we go along, but something you should keep in mind. Well, I, it, this in a certain way gives it away. Um, not, uh, yeah, this sort of gives it away, but that's okay. I mean, one of the, it, it, it 
it's incredibly important, this idea of death as menace, death as threat. Um, but again, the way this was written was not perhaps the most perspicacious way. It's brilliant, I think, but like many brilliant things in the history of philosophy, it wasn't exactly written uh, in the clearest way. And it has the, frankly, I love Paul Landsberg's uh, work, but it has the, it has the feeling of a first draft, which is fine. First drafts can be the best drafts. Um, but uh, this idea that menace, death as menace and threat, um, and uh, that is that uh, when death reveals itself in its true nature to us, uh, it reveals itself as something that is a threat and menace. Um, and I think it is quite true what I say there that Landsberg believes that the true nature of death only became revealed in human history with the emergence of Christianity. This is a Christian work. Moreover, it's a Catholic work. You know, um, you know, Christianity is Christianity, but there are different um, histories and different approaches and different styles of Christianity. This is a very Catholic work. Um, take that for what it is. Um, you know, one of the things to keep in mind is that uh, Landsberg says at a certain point that that the the central characteristic of Christ is that he is the victor over death. So death is the enemy. Um, so death is threat and menace. And we'll see how that is connected up with uh, personhood and with the next concept, which is separation, which I believe, yeah, oh, no, it's not the last one, sorry. Uh, separation. Um, the real tragedy of death is that it threatens to separate us. Uh, we'll see that it, well, perhaps the most important section of the essay is section four where he describes being with a dying friend being present at the death of the friend uh and um again this is all the sort of d the deep concepts in landsberg relate to each other uh experience uh, personhood death as threat um individuality separation love hope uh that they all relate to each other but uh, he, he they're, they're, they're distinctions that are important to make, uh, but they do relate to each other. The separation uh, is really where the threat of death comes from. I think that that is that persons uh, are threatened by death, and, and that threat really is the separation of persons, the sundering of community. And that community has to be about love. So um, really another thing to keep in mind when you're reading Landsberg is that death only really becomes a threat in a sense uh, when uh, it, it threatens love when it threatens uh, the community of individual persons um, and i think it's only really individual persons that can experience love in the fullest sense and so death uh, it, when death well we'll get into the details later and f uh, finally hope um which is a very big concept in, in, in Landsberg. Uh, I have called, I have characterized his, on a website, his thinking as a philosophy of hope, and it certainly is. Um, good thing to keep in mind, he does mention Heidegger, and he does take on Heidegger explicitly, uh, is that he is offering an alternative to Heidegger's characterization of human existence as being towards death. Um, his, uh, Landsberg is offering an alternative philosophy, which he seeks also to ground in human existence, just as Heidegger did, um, that uh, human existence is not, uh, in its deepest structure, a being towards its own end, it's a, or not, it, towards its, its own demise, towards its own nothingness, which is what the being towards death idea is, is that human beings in order to live authentically must acknowledge their finitude they must acknowledge that they come to an end uh, whereas Landsberg wants to offer an alternative where he says that the deepest structure of human beings is they, they seek their own perfection and that perfection as we'll see is only possible uh, by going through death uh, but the, the idea of hope is the hope of individual um, survival so uh, these are just the, the, what I consider to be the five or six really 
uh, most essential concepts of Landsberg's experience of death, but we will, I'll do a few videos uh, for each uh, of the readings. Uh, it is something you have to work at and, and give yourself time to think about these texts. You don't expect to be able to uh, simply uh, take a few, uh, make a few underlinings and so it's all there, but uh, you know, you need to take some time to think.